Hello everybody, this is Debo of Debo's Film Reviews, and this week's review will be Captain America Civil War, directed by the Russo Brothers. Starring Chris Evans as Captain America, Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, Don Cheadle as Iron Pat War Machine, I'm going to say, but Iron Patriot was what he was in Iron Man 3, uh, that's I'll get to that later on. With Emma Van Camp reprising her role as Sharon Carter. William Hurt as Thunderbolt Ross. Who might as well just well say, in my opinion, was the real villain, villain of the movie. Daniel Brule as, as Baron Zemo. Jerry Renner as Hawkeye. Paul Rudd as Ant-Man. And in this... MCU debut, Tom Holland as Spider-Man with Mercer Tomei as Aunt May. And of course, last but not least, the late great Chadwick Boseman as, as Black Panther. Wakanda forever. I gotta say, for a film that was titled Captain America Civil War, I almost would have considered it an Avengers movie cup, but... It was, they didn't call it, my opinion, they didn't call it an Avengers movie because of because because Thor and Hulk weren't in it because because you know they were well uh, Thor Ragnarok explains the what they were doing in the events of the Civil War and we'll get to that that in another video with those two. Back to Civil War. Now, I gotta say, it's an epic take on on how the politicians and governments div divided di divided the superheroes because of you know in a political debate over patriotism and jingoism. When after the Sokovian incident, where where. Scarlet Witch blows up a building after trying taking down Crossbones, who I gotta say was done dirty by, by the MCU, just having a short cameo in it beside a small part in, in Winter Soldier. Well, a somewhat small part in, in Winter Soldier. And of course, after that, the Sokovian incident, they contained the scene but caused collateral damage which caused the UN and and globalists to intervene. Or I say call them globalists because it was yeah, that's just what they are. I I don't care what you think about the political aspects of it, so you don't at me about political. Don't at me about it, so So and the events that kind of forced them, because with how with Iron Man and Cap trying to buy between being a free society or an anti state, with Iron Man being Iron Man, Black Panther, you know, after the death of his father, after who was, you know, which was by Zemo, Zemo and Hydra, which was. And with using Bucky as a patsy, Winter Soldier, of course, and of course, and back, at, and of course, Spider Man being being a new recruit and a kind of unofficial intern of a of the Stark Scarlet ship, and I'll say for his debut, he did an excellent job, but that was. That was once bad CGI use of it, bad use of CGI for that costume. I mean, that almost looked something like a, like out of a cartoon, and not in a good way. I mean, that looked cheesy, but hey, it still delivered. Cause cause that was a hell of a lot. Cause his performance was a hell of a lot better than Garfield, and of course. A lot of retcons in it were like, 
with William Hurtley and Secretary of State Thaddeus, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. Kind of surprised they made him Secretary of State in the, mo in the movies, while in the comic books he was a general who later became the Red Hulk. But, but of course, just as of now, just being the Marvel's equivalent to Amanda Waller. Which explains why why, Mar why they called it Marvel's Suicide Squad, uh, the Thunderbolts. But do we actually, well, who knows, in the future we might actually see him become Red Hulk in a future iteration. And of course, with Captain America knocking out a part of where he questions this patriotism at the, throughout the movie, where where he's where he sees, you know, in the after the events of Soko, the Scovia incident and how they got and how it divided the Avengers, to where Black Widow starts out at first sided with Tony, then then join Cap with Hawkeye joining Cap along with Ant Man, along. And of course with Bucky and and Falcon after Bucky breaks programming after getting captured the first time and mentioned and get you know and interrogated by Baron Zemo, who was undercover as a operative a CIA operative or, or under the, working for Everett Ross, not as far as us no, no relation to Thunderbolt Ross, played by Martin Freeman. That was a excellent job, and of course, an excellent back to a damn good debut for the for Black Panther, and how he just knocked knocked it out of the park. We miss it. We miss it, Chaz, Chadwick, and of course, of course, with Hawkeye, and I would say that kind of funny. That was kind of one where Hawkeye actually stepped his game up to where he just being a, my opinion, a joke character to where, to where he was, to where in the past couple of Avengers movies he was just he wasn't jack shit without a fuck without and once he lost his once he ran out of arrows, but once he turned that bow into a staff and at the airport fight, and then, or I scratch that I was a, that was a. You know, in a counter of vision, or Scarlet Rich teams up with Cap too. While Vision sides with it, sides with with Tony Stark. That is, you know, we'll talk about talk about the epic fight at the airport. Talk about one of the most epic showdowns in cinema history for not for a non-lethal showdown. That is. And oh hell, Ant Man becomes Giant Man. Spider Man because of his debut, and then pulls the pulls the Empire Strikes Back move maneuver on him. Vision tries to take down Falcon and ends up hitting War Machine. I gotta say, back to what I've said about him being Iron Patriot and in Iron Man Free. I guess which I gotta find it, which is. Kind of weird, cause given in Civil War he basically was was the Iron Jingoist, you know, kissing Tony Stark's ass, or talking about how you know, well, given how, about how they needed the, the Avengers needed to give up, needed to be regulated, and all that, and and of course Cap ain't down with that, and of course with Cap questioning. His beliefs and all, ratting alongside the the recent pa the passing of Peggy Carter, who was killed off in this film, and kind of given how that series eight her series was canceled a w week before the the movie premiered, I kind of got a fear, as a plausible fear that the Asian Carter stories were told from her deathbed. Although you say. Even though now the series is no longer canon, and and I'm actually looking forward to seeing her on What If, see her What If episode. 
and it's kind of weird to find the seal old, old cap and the cap and the whole relationship with Sharon incident and that deal and I'm just like yeah he he didn't know he was gonna go back in time back then so yeah yeah let's not go there but epic debut for Spider-Man I already mentioned and an excellent rec retcon of cat of making Aunt May younger. Gonna make surprised they didn't do like a surprising one of the Spider Man standalones. They didn't do it. They didn't have some nerdy friends walk up and pull a, pull a Friday on her going, Hi, Miss Parker. This one, I was like, because yeah, that's one of, one of the best, best roles Marissa Tomei's ever done. And of course, we even got some epic twist on it when you find out that was Bucky while still programmed under pro, under programming when he kills when he cat when he kills Tony Stark's parents. And I'll uh, say one more thing about Spider Man. I can say excellent introduction and at least they spared us to spared us having a Having to sit through another origin story, where because because the death of Spider-Man's Uncle Ben is about as about as mainstream as Superman landing baby Superman landing on Cooper Krypton or Batman's parents getting killed. I'm just like it's overdone. It don't need to be told anymore. More we all everybody even people that don't read comics know those free stories. And, and, oof. I was mentioning you know, some weird scenes, like how they use a, use a Volkswagen buggy, you know, as a cover vehicle. I gotta say, when Sharon goes inconspicuous, and all, how, and I'm just like, yeah. Kind of weird that, with Bucky and Captain America, Driving around a Volkswagen, which is weird for a car that was designed per by Hitler, who and that and them being World War II vets and all. And man, and it, of course you got to got to give it to to the late great Stanley and his "Are you Tony Stank?" line. And oh, and how perfect Don Cheadle was as as James Rhodes and. Much as I like to have seen Terrence Howard keep on, but yeah, I'm gonna keep bring that up when I I want to save that for when I review the, fir, the first Iron Man. And of course, of course, the the relationship between Wanda and Vision, you know, kind of starts getting hitting up to where they start getting along. I mean, he gets, but at first he kind of be like the overprotective after her, after she causes the incident, all the everything to go wrong, wrong trying to trying to save people, but getting collateral damage, and and then back to the suspension of the liberties deal with that Stark was pulling for because of because he mentioned one of his somebody in his scholarship was killed in that. Killing that incident, and, and I gotta say, I'm kind of you know all last but not least on Baron Zemo. I gotta say, kind of a, really underused in this one, but a lot. But they step finally they stepped him up with Falcon and the Winter Soldier spun off on Disney Plus. Especially had that one where he actually wore the mask and such from what he looked like in a Zemo looks like in the comic books to where to where in the movie movie it was just Daniel Brule as being a just being a Hydra agent who took it personally after after his wife and, and kids were killed by you know, as collateral damage by the Avengers and all and overall I gotta say Captain America Civil War a definite 5 out of 5 I hope y'all like subscribe enjoy and I'll keep dishing the reviews out